Doc, during practice, Kevin Harvick was not very happy with his race car. He felt like when he was on worn tires, the car wasn't comfortable anywhere on the racetrack. However, his crew chief, Ernie Cope, said that's when Kevin Harvick really shines. He knows how to adjust to these types of conditions. That's exactly what he's done so far tonight. Doesn't seem to be bothering him. He's been running inside the top five throughout the course of the evening. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch trying to rally. You remember the last pit stop. He lost four positions on pit road. Although he's still looking for some more side bite and some more forward bite. The car not perfect, but he is moving forward, Doc. And Reed Sorensen running back in sixth position in the 32 car. There comes Reed. He said as suddenly the car just loses front grip. He ran the first 65 laps, and the car was great. Lap 66, the front grip went away. He said now the front grip is gone again. He can only run the middle or upper groove and arc it in. Otherwise, the car will not turn at all. the car is very, very loose in. In fact, he said, it is so loose in, I cannot arc the corner, which means it's going to be tight coming off. If we can fix the loose end, I can arc it and be much quicker getting off. Much. Doc, as Alan said, the 88 team, weren't, they weren't really sure what to expect this evening. The car was so loose off the truck, they worked on tightening it up. But Pops thought that if they set the car up tight, it would work and the car would come to them. That's been the case. And you can see McMurray now making his way through traffic, bypassing one car, picking up yet another spot. He has high hopes for this car, high hopes for McMurray. And feels like he could turn into a very solid short track racer. Because after all, Tony Uri, this is the type of racing he loves and he thinks that's going to rub off. Meanwhile, Joey Logano back in the 20 car. Well, he's been fighting that car most of the evening, saying the car's been all over the place. At some points it's been tight, at other points it's been loose. It has been a struggle. They've already talked about what they're planning to do the next time down pit road. They're going to make a wedge adjustment and really try to free that car up a little bit, Dave. In countdown tonight, Mike, Matt Kenseth called himself picky. Well, he's being picky again. They cannot get this car right. He's giving crew chief Eddie Pardue another litany of adjustments that he's suggesting for the race car. It just won't do anything for him. You know, it's been eight races since he's raced with this team. They may not, they may not seem like a long time to you, but in this series, that's an eternity, and they're struggling. Lost four positions since the restart. Behind him, the 40 car of Mike Bliss. They're actually doing set of four tires. He didn't like the set he hit on before. Crew Chief Gary Showalter told me they will have to stop again, both for fuel and a set of tires. Doc? And give a call to Brendan Gaud and the 62 team. I mean, they have fought some little gremlins early on. When the race began, they were having radio issues. Suddenly the radios just quit and they couldn't communicate. They got that rectified. They worked on a loose race car that was loose in and tied off. And Brendan has been very, very patient on the racetrack as he now moves toward the top 10. Dave. Kelly Byers in the 10 car has been very solid tonight as he gets pressure now from Stephen Wallace. Wallace will look to the inside. This relationship for Byers with Braun Racing started last year when he ran a few starting parts and then a full race at Iowa. He said, I like crew chief Stuart Cooper. They like the way I drove the car. And when it came time for me looking for a ride this year, we got together again, Doc. And how about the 35 car? You say momentum doesn't work. Last week at Talladega, this car with Jason Keller, the $13 million man who has more starts in this series than anybody, had a top five finish. The team is so pumped up. They've got no sponsorship, very little funding. And here he is running in the top 15. Dave. Doc, during this run, James Busher is going the wrong way. They made some adjustments to the car earlier that really helped it, and they cooled the car down. He was running really, really hot, was worried that he might blow the motor, but they got tape off the grill. He's been running cool, and but he's losing positions right now from a loose race car, Doc. How many times have you heard someone say, I'm going to Disney World? Well, that's exactly what Paul Menard did to learn how to drive a flat racetrack. The 98 car had issues in last year running at Richmond, but it took the car down to Disney World, and they said, you know what? He learned so much on the flat track. This car was really good at Phoenix and is running well here today. Nicole? Of the 43 cars that started this race, only 16 cars are left on the lead wrap. Brad Keselowski picking them up one by one. More from Richmond when we come back.
talk a little baseball for just a minute. Sunday and Monday night, first Jose Reyes and the Mets face Philadelphia and Ryan Howard on Sunday Night Baseball, presented by Taco Bell. That's at 8 Eastern time. Then on Monday Night Baseball, presented by Sears Lawn and Garden, it's Tory Hunter and the Angels taking on Kevin Euclid and the Boston Red Sox. That's at 7 Eastern. Major League Baseball, ESPN and ESPN3.com, Sunday and Monday. Under green with 76 laps to go here at Richmond International Raceway. Brad Keselowski out in front. And a uh, closest race among the lead group at the moment is Kelly Byers in 12th and Brendan Gaughan in 13th trying to take it away. That's the 10 and the 62 cars. Again, just joining us, that 62 got a lap down earlier, got a free pass, made it up, and they've had some good speed in this segment of the race. Here goes Harvick on the move now underneath Edwards. I see Carl's been struggling just a little bit on late. Yeah, look at, whoa, <laughs> sideways <laughs> off the corner. Wow. That's loose. That's loose. And that's late on exit Even off I of turn two. Yeah. So that puts Harvick up to third. That's the good news for Kevin. Bad news is he's five and a half seconds behind Brad Keselowski. Now, we've had a long green flag run here. It's been, it's been a while. Let me rephrase. It's been a while since the leaders have pitted. They were last on pit road at lap number 98, right? Now, we get these long green flag runs at Richmond where guys are leaning on the brakes heavily. A lot of times the next caution comes no, from no, them. Don't say it. Don't say it. You don't, don't want me to jinx somebody? <laughs> no, don't jinx it. <laughs> All right. I know where you're going. Well, when, it, when it happens shortly, we'll tell you that's what I was talking about. <laughs> well, I can tell you. If, if any of these guys got a problem entering these long runs, it just compounds that problem, makes it worse. And there's probably some cars out there in this long run right now, right on the edge of hurting right front tires because of this brake heat I've been talking about. There, he said He said it. He said, he said, he said, he said, oh, I said it. <laughs> I said it first. But I'll you're take the blame. Uh, down there on the box, you're, you're sitting there hoping that your car is not the one that's going to do it first because somebody's going to if they run long enough and uh, you'll get a caution, but you don't want yours to be the one. You know, Andy, if you're driving this car and you're feeling something weird, you just got to manage that thing in, your, in yourself. You know how hard you can drive it. You know if you're overdriving it. How about the hurt? Jason Keller there. Isn't that great? Yeah, third fastest speed there at the line. Now, we've been keeping an eye on the speeds at the line because for a while, Kyle Busch was running faster laps than Brad Keselowski was. But now, Brad's out in some clear track, and he's kind of turned up the heat again a little bit where these lap times are concerned. Yeah. Oh, I mean, tight racing here now. Well, that's the part of the racetrack where it's Ooh. tough. Off a of turn four right there, you're trying to let that car run out. Yeah, you can hear him feathering that throttle. And that's not for position. Bain's a lap down. 99 cars back in 20th spot. Menard is on the lead lap. He's in 16th. They're separated by a lap. You know, we were talking about uh, the guys up front and how this 22 car, Brad Keselowski, has led so many laps tonight. He's led 122 laps so far, right? Well, a lot of times here in Richmond, guy that leads over 100 laps doesn't win. Uh -oh. <laughs> and in fact, here we go with that stat we throw out and see how it plays out at the end of the race. Yep. The race winner, and go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the stats can work against you, but I'd rather have a good car. If I've got a car that can lead the most laps, I think I'll take that over stats. Well, here, here, just, just chew on this number for the rest of this race. The race winner in three of the last four nationwide series races here at Richmond has led less than 35 total laps. That's not even 35 at the end. That's 35 total. And, and it probably gets right down to the very end of the race when the green-white checker restarts and when the tension's really hot, guys' cars are messed up, and that, that fellow, whoever wins the race, puts four tires on, runs them down, and mows them down. And we'll probably see a lot of that tonight late in the race. Looks like Carl Evers was looking for four tires as soon as he can get them. His car is really loose. Kyle Busch does make up another spot now. He's in fourth, fourth place. These guys are just babying the throttles up off the corners right now, just trying not to spin a tire, uh, not to, if you, if you spin a tire a little bit too much, I mean, it's gonna go away real fast. And it, talking about Carl Edwards spinning those tires off the corner, if he keeps it up, that's really gonna hurt the tire. But he's a smart enough driver, I think, to manage those tires, manage that forward body, and know that he's got a problem here. Even Kenseth there loose, you can see him in that shot. By the way, let me just tie, tie some of this together, that late caution thing. Yep. We've had a caution. The last, the last run between the last caution and the checkered flag in the last 15 straight Richmond Nationwide races, 25 laps or less. Ooh, wow. It can all turn around late in the race. Don't go away. Especially, That's one of the stats I'd pay attention to. Yeah, especially the way this season's been with all these late twists of plot. Got 65 laps to go. Brad Keselowski's dominating. Will he win? That remains to be seen. 